Hello. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, today. This is the Agroforestry in Action webinar series. Uh, today's presentation is titled Advancing Agroforestry in Europe, an update from URAF. Our speaker today is Maria Rosa Mosquera Lozada. The Agroforestry in Action webinar series is a production of the Center for Agroforestry at the University of Missouri. I'm your host, Gregory Ormsby Mori, the Education and Outreach Coordinator for the Center. Uh, presentations in the Agroforestry in Action webinar series are held uh, about approximately every month. And for more information on upcoming webinars and recordings for all past webinars, that information can be found through the webinar tab on the centerforagroforestry.org website. Today's presentation will run about 45 minutes, followed by some time for discussion and questions. Again, our speaker today is Dr. Maria Rosa Mosquera Lozada. She is a professor in the Department of Crop Production and Engineering Projects. Uh, uh, she's the director of, of the Department of Crop Production at the University of Santiago de Compostela in Spain. Dr. Mosquera Lozada has well over 25 years of experience teaching and, and conducting research around topics. Uh, well, research interests include agroforestry systems, civil pasture, the use of geographic information systems in combating forest fires, heavy metal contamination, and the use of organic residues as fertilizer. She's currently the president of the European Agroforestry Federation and is involved in managing several projects and agroforestry policy initiatives under URAF. And we'll hear an update on some of those uh, projects and issues in today's presentation. So uh, please, let's welcome today's speaker. Uh, Rosa, are you there? Yeah, I, I, I am here. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank a lot to AFTA and especially to you, Gregory, for this uh, invitation and for allowing me, on behalf of Jura, for me make this, uh, this, this presentation. Uh, I am going to, to start just right now. The title of it is uh, Advancing Agroforestry in Europe, an update from, uh, from URAF. Uh, I split the, the presentation in these six uh, big parts. Uh, I will start with an agroforestry definition because it's, it's a key issue to have a clear definition of what agroforestry is. It's not an easy issue, and there are a lot of people that have a lot of problems uh, to understand really what is we have. Uh, what is be behind this, uh, this concept. Uh, later on, I will go for, uh, for agroforestry and eco-intensification, eco later on with agroforestry practice at plot level, also at the landscape level, and I will end my presentation with the URAF uh, activities, which is the European Agroforestry Federation that has been uh, born, that has born on uh, 2011, and has done a lot of big job in, at European Union with some uh, uh, good, uh, good results, as I will show you later on. And finally, I will, I will make some, uh, some, some conclusions. Regarding agroforestry uh, com uh, definition, well, we adopt the one that is decided by the uh, FAO, followed by the USDA, and uh, it should be very specific. The, uh, every agroforestry practice or, or, or agroforestry system should be very specific for a climate and a, and a soil context. And used to have two uh, main elements. The first, the first one is a, a woody component, a tree or a shrub, Combined it with an agricultural production that has grown up on uh, its understory or in the lower lower story. If we have uh, pastures, then we, we we have another component which is the livestock. But agroforestry systems are not uh, natural systems; are they are artificial systems and are or semi-natural systems, you can say. And the man is always handling uh, with the management of it. And it has to be aware that, uh, um, that the, 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 there is an interaction between the different components. And any action I, I perform in a, or the man performs in a good component can affect the livestock or, pro, or crop uh, forest. So uh, most of us of all you uh, uh, know. Well, uh, agroforestry uh, fulfills uh, an important Europe uh, agricultural goal, uh, which is increase food production in a sustainable way. The sustainability is, is uh, set up on three main uh, aspects, which is social, economic, and environmental. And follows the, uh, what, uh, what the, and the FAO has defined agroforestry as one of the best tools to eco-intensificate systems. But not because we add more inputs on the systems, but, but because we improve the efficiency in the use of, uh, of, the, of the resources. Let's see uh, how agroforestry, in a very brief way, uh, is a good tool 
for uh, eco-intensification at both below ground and above ground uh, level. Well, this is a picture of the most important, one of the most important agroforestry systems in Europe, which is the Dehesa of the Montado. It has around 4.5 million hectares in the southwest part of, of, of Europe. And uh, well, uh, you can see here it's a uh, yeah it's a silvo pastoral uh, system. We can see here that we have trees. Below the trees, we have uh, some green uh, uh, vegetation, which means that uh, animals are able to be uh, uh, fed with fed with a longer period of time time during the summer time. But just imagine that we don't have this type of trees. If we don't have the trees, we only have brown uh, pasture because it is drought and we lose the main organs that are able to capture the, uh, ener uh, the, the radiation uh, from the sun to uh, produce biomass. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, this has been shown in a beautiful way by, Mr. Oh, sorry. by uh, Christian Duprat and Fabian Liard. In these uh, graphs you can see for a period of 40 years how uh, for a period of 40 years in the I'm sorry uh, oh, okay, that is this here. for a period of 40 years how uh, the light or the radiation is uh, used by the crop in red we can see that in agriculture we only the 30 percent of the of the sun is used so we lose uh, 70 percent of the light in, uh, use if we have a forest land we can reach up to a 50 percent of the light used uh, because the, the, the tree has vertical layer of leaves that are able to use it. And when we combine agroforestry, we increase the, the use of light, which is finally translated in an increase of um, biomass production. That has been quantified in different experiments in, in Europe. And it's uh, the biomass increase production per hectare is 40%, just because we use better the, 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 the sun. Uh, the sun. Uh, which are which are range uh, which are range between uh, with a range between 20 and uh, 80 per 80 percent. Well, uh, agroforestry also allows uh, a better use of the resources and increased biodiversity. Below the trees, we have species that are better adapted to grow up uh, uh, in shade conditions compared with uh, another uh, parts, and it allows adaptation because we have feed there to, to feed the animals uh, uh, later on. Well, uh, besides the better use of the resource, of the light resource, agroforestry is able to use in a better way the below ground uh, resources. Well, let's see uh, this as an example of uh, with the most important uh, activity that a farmer do to increase uh, crop or pasture production, which is to the use of uh, a nutrient. We apply a nutrient, we fertilize uh, a pasture or a crop to increase the production. But unfortunately, this, uh, this nutrient is lost, or part of this nutrient is, is lost. Uh, is, uh, when we increase the dose, it is uh, more, lost, uh, more lost and cause not nutrient contamination and, as we all we know, contaminations of, of rivers. If we have a tree, the tree is able to uptake this excess of nutrient and incorporate it to the system, so reducing the nutrient contamination uh, of the rivers but at the same time increasing the, the tree growth and also the crop, uh, uh, the crop uh, production because of the um, inputs of, of, uh, of, of, uh, of the leaves. Well, but be, be, be besides that, uh, agroforestry uh, is able to sequester more carbon because uh, we can see in this picture a crop. This is an ideal situation. And a tree uh, not competing for the nutrients with the, with the crop with the roots below, the, the, the tree roots below the, the crop uh, roots. Well, this is quite important because it's one of the best uh, tools that uh, the man has uh, to mitigate clim climate change because uh, the main resource of carbon in the soils are the, the roots. And if we have trees, we are able to explore deeper soil uh, layers and therefore to increase carbon sequestration uh, in soils, mitigating uh, climate, uh, climate change. It has been shown in an experiment we carry out in, uh, in collaboration with uh, Dr. Hollett uh, from the USA here in the Dehesa, where we sampled uh, deep soil layers, one meter of, of depth, 
uh, at below the tree and far away from the tree. And we can see that the uh, carbon dioxide storage in this, uh, at these depths, at these depths of one uh, meter, is 50 uh, tons per hectare uh, below the tree and half, mo mostly almost a half uh, below, uh, far away from the tree, around uh, 50 meters uh, uh, far away from the tree. Well, uh, besides agroforestry definition, uh, it's very important for policymakers and for farmers to identify clearly which are the main agroforestry practices that can be implemented at plot and, uh, and, uh, and landscape level. Uh, in a report that uh, you will have at the end, uh, the, the link, if you want to go in deep on this uh, aspect, we have identified close to five agroforestry practices that are quite equivalent to what has been des described in the, by the USDA, uh, uh, in the USDA uh, strategy, but also in India and in other areas, which are uh, silvopasture, combination of trees with, uh, or, or shrubs with, uh, with grassland, home gardens or kitchen gardens, those that have a woody component on it, like for example, fruit trees, riparian buffer strips when we are just protecting uh, water, water uh, streams, uh, seed water but when we mix a uh, crop with uh, trees or, or, or the shrubs, and forest farming when we have a forest and we obtain on any kind of agricultural uh, product from it, like for example honey, uh, medicinal plants or of mushrooms, uh, for example. I will be focused in the most important ones or the ones that have the most important one in Europe, which is the silver pasture. Uh, around, uh, Europe has around 20 million hectares of agroforestry, uh, of agroforestry, 85 of which is uh, silver pasture and a very small amount of, of silver arbor. But silver arbor has a lot of potential to mitigate uh, climate change. So, for grasslands, so those uh, agroforestry uh, name it last silver pasture. We can see here that we have 19.5 million hectares but only 10% of the EU potential area, only the 10% of the grassland area is occupied by silvopasture. Well, this is a map of Europe that we performed in the project, in the, in the Act Forward project. This is a, one of the most important uh, agroforestry European projects. And we can see here that in red, that most in, in most of the center uh, and uh, center part of Europe has not agroforestry at all, which, has, which is in red, and it's more associated to southern European uh, countries, these um, silvopastoral systems, which means that we have a strong uh, potential. So, wh wh are, why are they important? Well, uh, as we saw before, because it generates biodiversity, but it also allo allows adaptation both to flooding droughts, as we can see in this, in this, uh, in this uh, figure, but also to overcome uh, feed uh, shortage periods. Like uh, with strategies that were traditionally used all over Europe, Europe is full, uh, fully, uh, is, is, is really full of different pathways on which the animals uh, went for uh, hundreds of kilometers uh, from the, no the south to the north with, during the summer time within the short uh, shortage periods. Nowadays, that is mostly found in Italy, uh, also in uh, in Spain. Uh, we have a we call it a silver pathway that has over 600 kilometers, uh, and the, the main streams goes from Madrid in the in the, in the for the very same city of the center of of the capital of of, of Spain. And it, even now, every year, ships are going uh, through the, the, the this main street. And, uh, but uh, it, it has been mostly abandoned. And this is a, a picture to taken in, in, in Italy, on which we can see the tracks where animals are put inside, and they move from the lower parts to the uh, upper parts uh, to get some uh, pastoral grassland. If we have several hundred kilometers of these uh, pathways, then it's called transhumans. And if we have uh, shorter pathways, it's called transmittance. Well, uh, uh, silvopastoral means also allows to overcome feed shortage periods by the using of uh, multipurpose trees, by feeding on leaves and small branch, branches, 
And for this, I, I took this uh, experiment from Andrea Pardini, uh, who is a professor at the University of Firenze. They made this experiment in which you can see that Molus alba uh, is not... Uh, Molus alba... I lose the arrow. <laughs> Uh, Molus alba, what is, uh, you can see uh, winter. Molus alba is uh, growing, uh, has no leaves, so during the winter time it allows to grow up a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, pasture. During the summer time, we can see uh, that the, the pasture is, is dry, there is no, no, no pasture at all. But uh, the leaves are green, and this species is especially important because it has 20, uh, a 20, 24% of a 24% of uh, sorry, a 24% of crude, of crude protein. But there are another species that are important also. Robinia pseudacacia. I have had some experiments in the USA. Also here, are, it's a, a spread uh, a species. But in the past, uh, the most used were fraxinos, ashes, and birch, betula, betula alba. But our uh, main way uh, by using silvopastoral is to feed uh, animals, and, and during this shortage period is the use of fruit, mainly acorns. We have a very famous, I know, I guess you know this product, a very famous label for jam, which is um, Iberian, uh, produced by, by the Iberian Big, that is fit on on, uh, on acorns, and currently we have a lot of uh, initiatives of big companies that even they are even selling the products from the pigs uh, to Japan from Spain that are uh, with the pigs that are uh, just fit with uh, with, chest, with chestnut uh, fruits. It could be in areas where the steep is very is very high. So it's difficult to harvest it by hand. It's not profitable to harvest it by by men, or uh, it could also be uh, linked to different companies that are processing chestnut and those that are not good for uh, high uh, chestnut value, like for example the Mahon glacé. Uh, they just uh, give it to animals because they have very bad form or because they can have, for example, uh, worms. The quality of the products, both from an organoleptic point of view but also from a, from a healthy point of view, are much, uh, much better. Well, these are some pictures of agroforestry practices. We can see here animals just grazing. The, these are sheep grazing uh, both the, the chestnut trees and uh, the chestnut fruits and the, um, the oak, oak fruits. Here is during the summer. During the summer uh, time, in this, I mean, one of the main reasons why we have uh, such amount of silvopastoral systems in the south part of Europe is because we have this short, long shortage period during the summertime. In this, uh, during this period, the herbaceous uh, vegetation is not able to be alive. So the the way of of of, of uh, having herbaceous uh, er, er, of having uh, feed for for animals there of propagation, let's say, of uh, of maintaining this grassland is all, uh, is in two ways. One is maintaining with annual uh, species, so they die all uh, at the end of, of the spring, and they grow up again uh, from seeding, uh, from seeds, uh, at the, when the, with the first uh, autumn rains. But the other way is with the shrubs, and here you can see uh, sheep feeding on uh, legumes in, uh, in, in, the, in the Mediterranean area of, 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 of Europe. Here is just uh, in the just at the end of the summer, when the and beginning of the autumn, when the when the um, the herbaceous vegetation start to 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 come, and well, they have better quality, and they, this is a way of reducing, uh, yeah, the the, the 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 buying products from uh, external inputs on the on on the farms. Yes, it's also another example where they are just eating these acorns and some kind of of, of chestnut. Well, silvopastoralism is also important uh, from another of the goals of the European Union policy for, for, for the common agrarian policy, which is the increasing of animal welfare uh, and reducing greenhouse gases emissions and increasing pro productivity because animal welfare is maintaining. 
uh, having trees, uh, the animals are usually uh, below the trees when the, the extreme heat or uh, a lot of hot uh, is, uh, is around. Just uh, not only for feeding, but also always for maintaining their uh, corporal uh, temperature, which reduces the uh, plant. But also, uh, silvopastoral is, is seen in, in Europe as a way to reduce the impact of extreme, extreme events. This is a graph shown by the European Commission in one of the meetings we were with them. And you can see from the 1998 to, uh, up to last two years ago that there is a clear increase of events, uh, of, of extreme events all, uh, all over the, the, the world and all over, all over uh, uh, Europe. One of the most important uh, extreme events that we have in Europe uh, are the, the fires. And it's pretty clear uh, for different uh, yeah, strategies that have been carried out by different regional governments in, in Europe, uh, for example, Andalusia, Murcia, or, 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 or Madrid in, in Spain, or the, the area of Montpellier in France, or different areas of, uh, of Italy and also Greece, that uh, silvopastoralism is the best way to reduce fire, uh, fire risk avoiding red, uh, clearance uh, cost from the forest land and, of course, uh, carbon losses. And, well, this is a picture just to try to show uh, you why is, it, uh, is, 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 is this. Uh, we have here a forest. In this forest, we have uh, a control plot, okay, with a, a, a species, which is a, a legume, but uh, is very prone to be fired. It seems to be green, but you can see here that it is, uh, in, in the middle is, is brown, which is, means that it's, it's dry. And it has a vertical structure that allows fires to uh, move in a very fast way because it is oxygenated. If we have, uh, if we have um, animals, so the, 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 the size of the vegetation is drastically reduced. So the biomass is drastically reduced, and even if we have a fire here, uh, there will not be a problem because it will not go uh, to the to the canopy of, of the trees, and large extensions of, of fire will not be produced. And about, besides that, uh, firemen will have the opportunity to uh, to extinguish the, the the fire in a more uh, safe safe safest way. Well, this is a huge important uh, in, in, in the west part of uh, the southwest of Europe. Last year, over 100 people died because of fires in, uh, in Portugal, and 100,000 hectares were fired uh, in just two weeks, sorry, two days. So this, uh, this is, this, uh, there are def different uh, policies that are trying to enhance this type of land management to, uh, to reduce uh, the, the fire risk. This has been given to me by a colleague from, Fran from Italy, Antonello uh, Franca, where I think uh, it has, uh, you can see very quickly uh, the, the probability of burn of an area, of the same area, if it is uh, it's a model, uh, that if it is not grazed or, sorry, if it is not grazed or if it is grazed. We can see here that uh, white means uh, the highest risk. Uh, this uh, blue means the lowest uh, risk. Okay, you have here the scale. So you can see what uh, ungrazed uh, uh, forest, the barn probability is much higher than in the in a grazed uh, forest. But also the rate of spread of uh, of the of the fire is much higher when we are working in ungrazed forest than when we have a grazed forest. We can see that the the extension of the of the areas is, is much higher in the in the ungrazed forest, but also with the intensity, as we have more uh, uh, fuel well, fuel to be fired, then we have a largest uh, amount uh, a, a largest fire intensity than when we are when we are not we are, we are working with uh, forests that are ungrazed that with areas that are uh, ungrazed. Well, uh, silvopastoralism is also, also seen uh, as, a, as a way to reduce uh, negative wind effects on pasture, uh, on pasture growth because it, it, it um, reduces the desiccation, des desiccation effect of, uh, of, 
of, of the air when it moves in a, in a, in a, in a fast uh, way. Well, let's see uh, now uh, why, uh, which are the main advantages uh, from a climate point of view of uh, forarable, forarable uh, lands. Well, as I, I, I told you before, uh, silvopastoral means or occupies 19.5 million hectares in Europe, but silvopastoral practices are all, only a place setting on amount around half a million uh, hectares. It only occupies the 0.4% of the EU arable land, and when I compare this data with the data that are in the uh, references uh, in, in USA, uh, it's quite similar, it's below 1.1%. So that means that we have enough, a lot of uh, potential. And again, if we see where it's placed, we can see that it is in the, in the south part of, of Spain, uh, Italy of, of Europe, Spain, Italy somehow in, uh, in Greece, but the central part of Europe is lacks of this type of, of uh, system. So there is a, a clear huge, uh, huge potential. Well, uh, this picture was given to me by uh, Christian Duprat uh, from France. Uh, and it's uh, an experiment on uh, he put uh, some uh, some crops and you can see here due to the extreme heat event uh, if we have trees uh, the, there is not a destruction of the crop but if we don't have trees and this is a experimental plot uh, you can see that the the the, the crop is uh, just uh, extinguished it, it is it is dead it also uh, allows us uh, to, to maintain uh, the, the quality, which is much higher in these green leaves than in these uh, dyed uh, uh, areas. It could increase uh, also profit in all tree plantations, like for example, the ones that we can see in this, uh, in this picture, it's lavanda with olive trees. But it also allows uh, to better use of the resource in a, a special way, we can see here, fruit trees combine it with, uh, with crops, with vegetables, but it is, they are, uh, they are cle very, very clever combined because they, they, they take advantage of the delay of leaf production of some fruit trees, and which allows to have some vegetable production uh, below. So it's a kind of cropping autumn winter uh, uh, light. No winter, uh, summer. Another examples, for example, uh, jungle trees with uh, with maize that uh, allows to have a better, uh, a more um, thin and straight uh, trunks. Chestnut trees combine it with uh, with crops. From the beginning, uh, and this is quite used. Uh, that was quite used in the past in the in the central part of Europe, uh, to put putting trees, the stoa forest, and when they were very small, combine it with any kind of crops because there were a lot of uh, bare land that can be used for cropping. And even uh, there was a governmental promotion on on on, on that because the the public estate just rented these uh, these uh, areas with the small uh, trees for 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 far to farmers. Well, and I will just talk about a bit about the, the last uh, agroforestry practices that is stand, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's used in, in, in Europe, and it's related with a new concept in Europe, which is a smart villages, big economy, a circular economy, better and big connections between rural and, uh, and urban areas. Well, kitchen gardens occupies a small amount of uh, areas in Europe, but 60% of, of, of them has uh, fruit trees and, combined, and are combined with uh, and are combined with uh, with crops, with vegetables. This uh, type of agroforestry practice is more used across uh, across Europe. There are areas where not, but most of them uh, are in, in this uh, in this. Uh, this part of here is where the DEHESA system is, so the main system there is, uh, is, the, is the, 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 the DEHESA cannot be the, 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 
kitchen gardens or home gardens. So there is a huge potential also for this. But agroforestry practices are implemented at plot level. It can be implemented also at, at farm level and at landscape level. If we implement it at farm level, it's a, it's a duty for a farmer, but if we implement it at landscape level, it is a duty for uh, the policymaker to make a, a better uh, use of the, of the land. This uh, picture was provided by Alain Canet and Fabien Balaguer from, uh, from France, and you can see, where you can see that different elements, uh, critical components in the, on the landscape can help to have a better water quality here, but also to produce somehow some kind of full good that uh, can be used for, as a renewable energy, reducing uh, greenhouse gases emissions. This is an example uh, that is uh, important in, uh, in the Danube. Uh, they have a very big, big project between uh, Bulgaria and, and Romania, on where we can see a lot of um, riparian buffer, uh, buffer strips. The main problem they have is to increase the quality of the water, but also the, 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 the problem of the uh, wind. Uh, and having this type of, of systems with a lot of hedgehogs, uh, they have demonstrated that the crop production is increased by 20%. Other examples are, for example, in Italy, where animals, the rotation of animals in different areas, allows a better recycling of, 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 of nutrients. This is more or less, uh, yeah, how are agroforestry practices in Europe uh, and why they should be uh, there and the, the potential they, they have. And, well, I like to end the, the, the presentation just uh, speaking a bit about the uh, URAF activities. Uh, the European Agroforestry Federation is a federation that has 18 associations included, uh, 18 national associations that is making, uh, uh, that are making lobbying in, uh, in, the European, uh, in the European policy bodies, which are the Council, the European Parliament, and the European uh, Commission, trying to make a general uh, policy that favors uh, agroforestry. And this is the main duty of the European Agroforestry Federation. Uh, we go to Brussels uh, every 15 days, let's say, more or less. We work in the parliament, making, uh, explain, explaining them the policy side, which are uh, the main advantages of agroforestry and what they should be promoted, as I did for you today. Also, uh, in the European uh, Commission, the European Commission is the technical body of the European Union. Uh, they are the ones that are in charge of writing all the European uh, re laws and regulations that will deal with the uh, common agrarian uh, policy that is used in all, all Europe. They have uh, civil dialogue groups, which are groups of experts uh, uh, that, are, that met every, every month or every depending on the group, every six months or, or quarterly, and where uh, there is a discussion of the current uh, regulations, how are they going on, but also the new one. And now we are in a very important moment because we are starting to discuss what is going to happen uh, after the, 20, the 2020. We also belong to the European Network for Rural Development, Structural Investment Funds, uh, also, uh, well, uh, yeah, we, we are now just pushing a European agroforestry strategy, trying to present it in international uh, events, like, for example, the World Agroforestry Congress, that could, be, could, could take place, place next year in, in Montpellier, and to which all of you are invited. By, but the 18 uh, associa national associations that belong to the European Agroforestry Federation are also acting at national and uh, regional uh, and, and regional and regional level. Well, this is a picture where we show uh, explain in the in the in the Parliament uh, uh, with the project uh, Afime, uh, uh, Agrofi, uh, that agroforestry should be pushed, and one of the key elements for that is fostering uh, education at all at all at all levels. This lobbying activities has. Uh, yeah, has helped us to move uh, agroforestry in the policy agenda at the European level. We were able to modify the forest strategy, uh, European forest strategy. So also to create that the European Commission creates a focus group on agroforestry that uh, has already taken place and has very good information. And also uh, we are now trying to, to move forward to the accountability 
of these trees that are uh, not in, in a full uh, uh, covered uh, areas uh, with, with forest for the Lulucia. Lulu well, uh, we can say that Europe is in the most important committees dealing with agroforestry policy, but at national level, we are now, uh, we have uh, several of them are involved in national networks, in national focus groups, and in national operational groups that are uh, working with, uh, with uh, agroforestry. In the parliament, we are now, as I said, two uh, fighting for the uh, need of, of a European agroforestry strategy. And we show always this uh, picture that, uh, well, there is a book recommending the, that was written by the FAO, uh, edited by the FAO, about advancing agroforestry in the policy agenda, mainly linked to uh, yeah, mitigation and adaptation of uh, ma ma climate change. We also show that there is a strategy in USA, also a national strategy in India, but there are uh, some uh, in, in, an, in other countries, like for example in Mexico or in Brazil, and uh, the only country in Europe that has a uh, national uh, agroforestry uh, strategy is, uh, is France. Which are moving a lot of uh, on that. Why do we think that uh, we have to have a, a, a agroforestry, a European agroforestry strategy? Because uh, this is the a summary of the document that is done by the European Commission regarding on the future of the CAP on food and farming, and we think that agroforestry can play a role in food security, ge generation renewal, driven uh, rural areas, climate action, environmental care, uh, resilient uh, farming sector, and uh, farm fair income, as uh, you can uh, in, in We have also, uh, URAF is also working uh, with international, uh, making international collaborations, like for example, the Global Alliance for Climate Smart Agriculture, which is an official observer of the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel of climate change, the Global Research Alliance uh, in the crop division, we are working on that. Also uh, in the FAO and the I IPCC. So just uh, some conclusions from now. It's uh, well, what we think is that agroforestry is an excellent tool to increase productivity and provide ecosystem services in if adequate species are mixed for a specific context. Agroforestry increases resilience in plots and farms while, while mitigating and updating climate change. The good component promotion in agricultural system should be promoted, providing agricultural system benefits, and that adequate design of policy, research, learning, innovation should be delivered in order to take advantages of agroforestry practices to promote ecosystem services and deliver it uh, from uh, agricultural land. And for this, we need uh, a European uh, strategy. And I leave to hear you more uh, places where do we have more information. Uh, you can see the five, uh, it, they are in a chronological order, the most important agroforestry projects, the SAFE project led by Christian Duprat. It's a specific dealing with uh, Silvarable. Agrofair and Agrofair is, is led by uh, Charles Burrell, is, is, is linked to, uh, to education. Act Forward, I already about, uh, spoke about it, and the current one that is uh, uh, still going on is Affinet, that is an agroforestry innovation network where farmers and researchers are working in, diff in nine different regions of Europe, just trying to, to, to deliver information and create a knowledge cloud where uh, information is delivered and easy to use uh, for all farmers all over the world and, of course, of Europe. It will be translated to, into nine uh, different uh, uh, languages. Here you have the link of the EIP Agri, which is a body of the European Commission, because they did uh, an agroforestry focus group. You have also more information in the Europe uh, newsletter, if you want to, uh, to subscribe, it's for free. We are working also on innovation. So you, I put here to you, if you want to see which are the main innovations that we are developing, uh, uh, of the links to that forward project, also the Affinet project. And, uh, and and the 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 others, and these are uh, two policy reports that has uh, the, the information I provided you in a more extensive uh, way, and that were produced uh, within the framework of the uh, Act Forward project for policymakers in uh, in Europe. And thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you, Rosa. Uh, thanks for that excellent presentation. Um, we uh, heard from Rosa an overview of uh, some of the activities of, of URAP. 
Uh, we do have time for some discussion and questions. So I'm going to uh, go ahead, Rosa, and open up a, a question and answer uh, pod or box here that uh, participants can write in uh, any questions. Uh, keep in mind, this presentation is uh, recorded and so will be available um, for viewing on uh, through the Center for Agroforestry.org website. So if you have any questions uh, or comments for Rosa, please uh, go ahead and uh, enter them into the uh, dialog box you see there. Um, uh, while, Rosa, while uh, some of our participants are, are sending in any, any questions or comments, maybe I'd like to follow up with you. Uh, about one thing. You did mention uh, maybe the need for a, a European level agroforestry policy. And I was wondering about the status of that. I mean, in the United States, so you, you, you cited the uh, US strategic framework uh, from the years 2011, 2016. Uh, and uh, I think the work is, is currently ongoing to hopefully create a new strategic framework for looking forward. But part of, uh, one thing that was uh, key in that uh, straight US strategic framework for agroforestry was uh, that there was to be a an articulation of a, of a uh, an agroforestry policy statement. Well, it never happened. I don't think it's given up hope yet, but it hasn't happened yet. What's the status in Europe? Uh, ha is there an official recognition by the UE EU Ag Commission of the need for a an agroforestry policy, and is there support for uh, developing and creating such adopting such a policy? Yeah, the, um, I mean, the European Commission is aware, is quite aware of about uh, agroforestry. Uh, we have a measure in the rural development programs of about agroforestry, which is clearly defined. Uh, this measure mm -hmm. can be used or not by the by the by the state member states. I mean, the, the European Commission is not easy to understand how policy works. There is a common framework. They put a lot of options. One of the options is agroforestry. So we have a measure. That was uh, obtained thanks to the job of, of Christian Duprat so in 2006 with the SAFE project. Uh, but they, are not, uh, they, they were not very successful in the last uh, in the implementation in the last CAP. Uh, the, in, in the current CAP, we are growing up on the on the extension of this uh, policy uh, measure used by uh, member states. So my, my feeling is that they are that uh, they are they agree that agroforestry is a good thing. They, they agree that we need to put it, uh, move it. They try even to, to create a measure, but uh, agroforestry is a complex system that is not well understood by everybody. So a lot of effort has to be done in, uh, from the research point of view to, to help farmers to, to adopt these kind of systems. In the Affinet project, we are asked, which are the best combinations? We need more information. We need, they see the potential, but they are not able to, to implement it. Now, uh, I, if I understand correctly, for the participation in some of those uh, civil dialogue groups, uh, there's actually uh, you know, a, a, a formal place at the table and, and, and even some financial support for, for URAF and, uh, or uh, participation in those civil di dialogues. Is there any tangible uh, support uh, from the, the EU for the process or mechanism to create an agroforestry policy or beyond simply recognizing that it's needed or important? We have already uh, an agroforestry measure, so uh, the farmers are paid uh, mm. for having, uh, I mean, for establishing agroforestry. They did not pay until this year uh, for maintenance or improving already existing agroforestry. That was a big complaint from the southern countries. Uh, but do, do we, do, we do have a, a, an agroforestry measure. It can be improved. They have some problems because if in some cases, if you implement this type of measure, which is in Pillar 2, then you lose the big payments of pillar one, and this is a, a lack of good connection that we are uh, we have to work with uh, with it. Regarding the the support of them, yeah, I mean uh, every uh, we, we were invited by the European Commission. We are paid to, for going there, both accommodants and and the travelling cost to go there and explain the ideas and trying to to explain them uh, how agroforestry can fit in the different types of strategies and in the different types of regulation that they go from the livestock regulations, to the biodiversity, to the bioeconomy, and we are working on, do on all of that because the Commission is really aware that agroforestry is a good, uh, an excellent tool to, mostly uh, the, the main uh, aspect for them is biodiversity and also mm -hmm. climate change. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Well, good. Thank you, Rosa. Um, let's let's turn and, and and see if we can let's try to address uh, respond to some of the questions that that have come in. Uh, if you see on your screen there, the first question from Sul, I can't quite pronounce the, if I'm getting that right. But uh, what would agroforestry in northern Europe uh, temperate climates look like? Uh, where no, uh, there are not many examples exist. Do you see that first question? How would it be different from Southern Europe? Yeah, well, uh, the main difference between the, the north and the south of Europe is, is, is the, the summer the summer drought. Uh, the trees and the good perennials are needed in the south of Europe to feed animals, which are the main uh, yeah the main use of, of the whole uh, landscape. In the north of Europe, there are uh, some traditional systems which are quite interesting. Some of them, even I'm uh, thinking in, in Germany, for example, there, there is a movement of trying to make the orchards grazing, which is a type of agroforestry, um, a, a UNESCO heritage. But there are also some modern agroforestry practices that are there. For example, the ones used for restoration. Uh, Alicop cropping uh, is used for restoration of, mine, uh, of mining at, uh, activities. Also, uh, there are also another examples linked to uh, yeah, water stream uh, protection, uh, for example. Uh, how they do look like, I mean, they, if we are thinking in orchards, they look quite similar in the north and in the south, but uh, if, uh, if we see in the landscape, due to the climatic conditions, the, 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 the species are, are different. I do mm. hope to have answered the, the, the question. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, there's this some more. The Florencia Montagnini uh, asks about uh, some of the important constraints to the adoption of agroforestry, and specifically in the, as she indicates, in the areas of the maps that are in red. Now, are, are we clear on which uh, of the maps you're referring to? Well, this is a very excellent question because in the Affinet project uh, where we have um, we have uh, meetings, regular meetings, every six months with uh, stakeholders, with farmers uh, in the regional agroforestry networks. We have also uh, exam- uh, representativeness in, the, in these red parts of Europe. Uh, in concrete, we have in Belgium, in, in Poland, and also in Hungary. The main constraints they have are uh, related with, te- there are technical aspects, and they, most of them are related with which are the best combination how to implement agroforestry, but not only just from a technical point of view, but also from a value chain point of view. Uh, it's a more complex system, more ha- uh, man, uh, power demanding system. So how can we, imp- because they are more healthy, how can we put a label? This is one of the things that I was asked to. Another aspect they asked us uh, was about, uh, yeah, can you show us uh, alternatives? Do you, can you design some tools to compare different alternatives for a short, medium, and long term. This is another aspect. But there are another ones that are uh, yeah, also constraints, like, for example, the policy aspects. For example, the lack of connection between Pillar 2, where you can y- use money to uh, establish agroforestry, and the Pillar 1, where you get the money, uh, the, the highest amount of money for, for, the, for the piece of, of land, is that is not well connected. If you mm-hmm. use, if you establish agroforestry, you lose the p- pillar one payment, and this is a this is indeed a, a strong problem uh, uh, for 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 them. Mm-hmm. There is another problem uh, which is uh, related with communication and also uh, knowledge. They say that uh, we have to make first of all make consumers aware of the advantages of this type of systems. And for this, uh, uh, you know, get uh, a bit more of, of, of money, but also uh, in the different types of education levels. Like, for example, high schools, primary schools, university, we don't have degrees or we don't have uh, masters on agroforestry. And this is a problem because usually uh, the students are shown forest lands or agricultural lands. They, they are not experts on combinations. And this is uh, another of the problems that has been highlighted by the farmers that we interviewed in the different in the nine regions of uh, of, of, of Europe with the project uh, uh, project uh, Affini. Mm. See another question. Let's see. 
Well, there's, there's two more there. Uh, one from Michael Cooley on uh, asking if you were able to speak to the current use of and practice of multi-strata uh, or agroforestry. So I suppose uh, um, something beyond a, 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 a two or three uh, component system, much like some of the tropical multi-strata agroforestry. Is there any use or practice of that in Europe? Uh as far as I, I mean, the, 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 the basic concept of multi-strata agroforestry, I'm not aware that it's really used it in the same way than in, in, in other parts of the world. Let's say that uh, there could be some yeah, permaculture examples, of course, uh, going in that uh, direction, but they are not really uh, very well spread. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you consider them, uh, yeah, uh, different products, uh, obtain it for the same piece of land, like for example, honey, mushrooms, medicinal plants, and timber. Yeah, we can have uh, some of them, but it's not very common. Maybe in the home gardens, where you can have, for example, grapes combined with fruit trees, and also growing up uh, some vegetables, you can have some kind of, but they are not very spreadly used, let's say like this. Hmm. Thank you, Rosa. Uh, well, there's there's one more question that's come in, uh, if you see there, from Ronald Larson, and he asks about, uh, is there any database for combined agroforestry and CDR, especially biochar, in Europe or anywhere? Um, are you, is that question clear? To, are you able Maybe. to respond? What, what do you mean exactly by CDR? Sorry. <laughs> That, that I'm, I'm not, I'd have to, I'd have to check myself. I'm not sure what, what Ronald means. Uh, maybe Ronald, if you can write in the chat box there, uh, specifically what is meant by CDR, or pardon our ignorance on that. But uh, he's really asking about biochar. Yeah. 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 He's asking about, about uh, biochar is, a, is an option that is used uh, in some parts of, of Europe. For example, in my area, we have an expert, which is, who is called Felipe Matias. He's working with biochar and also with techno, techno, okay. Techno, with Technosols. Uh, he has a company and is spread all over Europe and, 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 uh, and the world. Uh, but um, from, the, from the meetings I was with the Commission, I, yeah, BioCharge is mentioning it. There are some, uh, 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 yeah, some, some kind of, uh, but it's not mentioned as CDR. This is the, this is yeah. what I, I, I don't yeah, think he, it's a database. Yeah. He's explained, yeah. Ronald's explained CDR, he refers to as carbon dioxide removal. I think you can also uh, call it carbon sequestration. What, um, I, what, I can, what I can say for that is that the European Commission is now asking to all the member states to develop uh, um, uh, a climate change strategy. And within this, you have to put options to reduce or to remove uh, carbon dioxide from the, from the atmosphere and reduce the, the emissions uh, also. And on these, uh, there are some options. Of course, biocharge is one, agroforestry is another one, but not uh, specifically about combination of agroforestry and CDR. They are okay. options. Good. Well, and finally, uh, Michal Pastor from Slovakia is uh, interested to promote and foster agroforestry cooperation in Central Europe and uh, suggest some ideas. So perhaps there can be a follow up. Uh, uh, after this uh, presentation, Rosa, with uh, with Miguel Pastor, if you have any thoughts on promoting and fostering agroforestry cooperation in Central Europe? Yeah, well, uh, Europe has uh, already some uh, countries that are uh, that are uh, part of Europe, so that are in the central part of Europe, uh, which are Poland, Romania, um, um, Hungary. Bulgaria, as I mentioned, even in Slovakia. So the main the main way is to uh, because as you can see, Europe is working at two levels. Uh, one level is in the European Commission, and another level is at national scale. So in each national in, in each national country, we have an association on which there is promotion of agroforestry. We are asking for projects together to the European Commission to have a very good combination. But we are also working in the different national networks, which is the the place where agroforestry have to be pushed because if we at the European level create a very beautiful measure on agroforestry but the country doesn't have take, uh, take it because of lack of knowledge or because they are not aware of this type of system, we lose the battle. So it is very essential that uh, is all European countries go uh, move forward at both sides, at national level, even at regional level, uh, and at, uh, at the European level. But mm -hmm. I can just give you the contact of... Uh, 
uh, this is in the in the URAF uh, web page. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Rosa, and uh, you know look forward to uh, learning more and, and seeing how things advance uh, with URAF and and URAF in in Europe and promoting agroforestry. And I think. Uh, uh, I think a lot of lessons uh, for us and elsewhere around the world, uh, for example, here in the United States, where we'll need to both work at the federal level and, and policy as well as in the individual state levels. So I uh, look forward to seeing how progress and learning from progress in, in Europe. Um, there is one more question that has come in. Uh, I think the last question there, Rosa, from Antonello Franca and asks about uh, one of the problems to be solved is the tolerance to the shading of the herbaceous species to be introduced in agroforestry systems. And with a view to the productivity of crops and pastures under the trees, uh, do you have any information on the state of current research? Um, yeah. Any final comment on that final question? Yes, uh, uh, I fully agree with what uh, Antonello Franca said. It's a strong problem on that because usually when you grow, I mean, when you see, uh, yeah, you see the, the the crop. You you are buying uh, uh, seeds that are um, that were improved to grow up in uh, in open sites. They are not uh, adapted or selected for growing up in shade areas. And this is a problem because it is, it is a different combination of, of, of things there. Regarding the the research, I can say that uh, the first research that I am aware was conducted in Italy. Uh, compare it, it's published, I can send you the paper, comparing uh, the adaptability of croplands and, and grasslands to be grown on shade. And I can say that the reduction of production due to the shade, the shade is much higher in croplands than in, in, uh, in grasslands because they, they, they are able to change the, the composition of the species and this biodiversity will give, gives them the opportunity to, to, to grow up much better uh, on the, under, the, under the shade for, for trees. But I have also to say that in, uh, there are uh, several activities carried out, at least as far as I know, in France, uh, but uh, Christian Duprat working on that. Also in, uh, and in, and in Spain, we have in Spain a, a project. Uh, I coordinate that, uh, that project that involves three of the 17 regions of Spain, on which we are trying to develop, uh, to, to, to test and improve uh, crop uh, varieties of wheat, uh, oats, uh, maize to grow up under, uh, under different uh, trees. Uh, we are testing uh, oaks uh, and high value timber trees, like for example, juglans and, uh, and, and cherries. In France, they are testing it with uh, poplar. Okay? So there are some movements on that, uh, on that way, but we, we need to, more people involved in this type of, of experiments. Yeah, thank you for the question, Antonio. Mm. I can't thank you. information. Oh. And thank you, Rosa, for um, for your presentation and 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 uh, the discussion and questions. It's an excellent presentation. Um, yeah, I wanted to thank you, and it's been a pleasure having you with us uh, for this uh, uh, presentation in the Agroforestry in Action webinar series. Uh, just to, to uh, remind you that this presentation has been recorded and will be available for on-demand viewing, uh, as are all previous. Uh, webinars in this series. It's available uh, through the webinar tab on the centerforagroforestry.org website. Our next uh, presentation in, in the series is coming up real soon on May 2nd, just two weeks from today. That's a presentation titled Black Walnuts, Potential Health Benefits and Consumer Preferences. It'll be presented by two of our own researchers here at the Center for Agroforestry, Zen Kai and uh, Don Vu. So please join us for, uh, for the, that presentation. And again, Information on upcoming webinars and all previously recorded webinars are available through the webinar tab on our website, centerforagroforestry.org. Thanks again for joining us. Best to you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, to the rest of, of the participants. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Rosa. Bye, everyone.